you seeing in terms of the metaverse from, from the Neom standpoint and, yeah. and from a practical level? Yeah, so we've been very fortunate in that for Neom, it's a greenfield opportunity for the metaverse. As it is physically being built, we're also able to build the metaverse simultaneously. We also have every sector that you would need in a society, and all of those are also looking at how to use the metaverse to its best advantage. I'm super fortunate that I get to build on top of the metaverse platform, and we get to build viable businesses inside of it, whether it be in the cultural side, if it's food, if it's education, or even from a workplace perspective. Excellent. And, and Guy, you really are all things metaverse because you're thinking about you know, structure and process, and improving the way we do things, but then also what is that end user experience and sort of everything in between? Well, it's wonderful that we're following uh, the presentation before from Joseph, he really kind of set the stage for the opportunity as he sees it. And we're helping clients across a range of these giga projects and mega projects that are in, in the region uh, and allowing us to help first Imagine that twin solution of what it might be so you can then investigate and explore the data. Then you can start to build metaverse solutions on top to allow that to then be broadcast to the world. So we can take things like these amazing projects that people have never seen before to allow people in other countries and other places explore them and be attracted to them. And then we can then, once they actually become part of it, they can have a private metaverse experience which is related to them as a resident or a tourist, which is, which is specifically uh, uh, kind of guarded and provided where you've got a specific experience. Yeah, and so Daria, I, you know, I think largely we have to credit Facebook for really shining a light on the metaverse by changing their name from Facebook to Meta. I think that changed the industry and accelerated how we look at it. And so since that happened, which uh, unbelievably is only a little over a year, I mean, it's a year and a half ago. Uh, you know, where, where are you sitting today and, and, and what are you seeing in terms of opportunity and, and kind of global adoption of the technology? Yes, it was a big move from us last year, changing our name. And we have been observing this trend for nearly a decade now. And it's not something new for us. We've been working on it uh, uh, for a long time. And, um, and every technology presents with new opportunities, uh, new disruption, the way we do things, and also new risks. And Metaverse is not going to be here for another five to 10 years. And one strong learning from the internet era was technology moved fast, users adopted very fast, and regulations and governments kind of played chase and we wanted to make sure that we build metaverse in a responsible way and also an inclusive way to start the conversation nearly 10 years before the technology is even here so working together with the um, civil society with regulators with academia with the tech industry together thinking about how we can uh, build it responsibly uh, with more inclusion, with safety and security in mind, with privacy in mind, and uh, enabling opportunity, economic opportunity, because we won't be able to build it alone. And uh, it will be very important to, um, to collaborate on that. It's not going to be like building an app. It's going to be building the entire internet from scratch. So we have to come together. And that's the, the reason why we um, made the announcement last year. And it's been very encouraging to see that the tech is moving into the space now. Like you see, all big tech is moving into the space, gaming companies and platforms. So it is exciting to see where we will be headed to. But surely it will open many opportunities. We need to do it responsibly.